y'all, you all were obsessed with me bringing you the tips and tricks on things that I bet you didn't know you could do with your Cricut. So guess what? We are back with more, except in today's video, I'm gonna be showing you things that I bet you didn't know you could do in the design space. My name is Lauren and I'm a craft producer here at Makers Gonna Learn. And if you are new to our channel, what we are is we are a crafting community, a membership where we bring you inspiration, education, and motivation. Plus, if you are a member, you get thousands of cut files, hundreds of fonts with new cut files and fonts released to you every single month. If by chance you might be interested in signing up, y'all, click that first link down below. We have a special deal where you can sign up for our membership for only $1, y'all. It blows my mind that we even have such a great deal for our membership because with this $1, you get unlimited access to everything on our website for seven days, plus you get 20 downloads which equals out to five cents a download. Y'all, I don't know anywhere else where you can find downloads that cheap, but I definitely think you need to check us out, try us out for a dollar. You can search the website. Like I said, you have unlimited access to all the curriculum, all the education that we offer to our members as well. And you can do that only for a dollar. With that being said, let's go ahead and hop over into Design Space so that I can show you things that I bet you didn't know you could do. Now that we're here in Design Space, let's start off super simple. You see we have nothing on our canvas. We are working with a blank white canvas, but y'all, did you know that you can change the color of your canvas? Now I know you're thinking, Lauren, no, how do I do that? If you look down here at the bottom right hand corner, it says blank canvas. When you click this box, everything up here at your top taskbar changes. It kind of all goes away. You, except for the color right here. What you can do, click on that color, and then you can choose any color canvas you want to work with. Now, this is great if you are working with stickers, if you're making stickers that you want to have a white offset, or you're working with other materials that do have a white offset. It's really, really great to change the color of your canvas so that you know if something has things that you need to be removed or added, things like that. Let me show you an example of what I'm talking about. So if we go over here to our uploads and we just upload a print and cut image, we'll start with this one right here. We're gonna add that to Canvas. Because my background is gray, I can see that if I were to print this out and cut it without adding an offset, Cricut is going to cut every single thing that you see gray. It's gonna cut around all of your squares, it's gonna cut around all of your letters and things like that. So. Like I said, especially helpful if you're working with print and cut so that you can see what is going to cut, what is not, because if this canvas was white, you might think, oh, it's just, it's gonna cut out this whole square. But by changing the color of our canvas, we know now that we do have to add an offset to this so that it can cut all the way around it. Now, while we're talking about our canvas before we get into designing features, did you know that you can turn off or turn on your grids and have different grids? If you didn't, let me show you how. First, you're gonna go up to the three lines in the top left corner. You're gonna come down here to settings, and then you're gonna go to your canvas. Now, this is where you can turn it on or off. You can have no grid. You can have a partial grid, which is going to give you inch by inch lines, or you can have a full grid, which is going to give you all of the different measurements within your inches. So it's going to give you your quarters, your half, your eighths, all of that. So let me show you exactly what I mean. Here you can see when you zoom in with a full grid, you have a line at every interval. So you have a line for your half, you have a line for your quarter and your eighth and so on. If we go back to our settings and we turn it on to partial grid, you then see we just have a line for each inch. So this is just going to be a personal preference and let me change this back to white so that we can see it just a little bit better. This is going to be a personal preference if you wanna work with a grid, if you want to not 
This is, like I said, this is just something you can do within your settings is turn on and turn off that grid. It's really helpful depending on different projects that you might be working on. It may be helpful for you to see the grid, for you to use those measurements or not. So just so you know, you can turn on and off the grid. Now, while we're in settings, let's talk about one other thing in settings. If you look here on the general page of the settings, you obviously can change your language that you are working in, love that. But one of my favorite things to do is go back and forth between my application experience. So if Cricut is working on new features that they may be releasing in Design Space in the future, you can actually change from live to beta version you can get kind of like a sneak peek of those features that may be coming out in the future if you change from live to beta. So let's change to beta and see if there is anything else that we can do. Now you do have to restart Cricut to do this, so you will have to save all your work if you're working on something. So we're gonna switch to beta. We're gonna click done. It's going to start it up for us. And then we're just gonna see if there's anything that Cricut has in the beta version right now that we might be interested in using. Now, while this is loading, one thing I do want to say is sometimes working in beta can be a little glitchy, so just be aware of that. There are going to be some new features that you may not have in the live version, and it's going to be possibly be glitchy because it is not the live and it is going through beta testing. So just be aware of that. You can switch back and forth, but just know that it may be a little glitchy. So we're just gonna go ahead and sign in. So automatically with opening beta, I can already tell you it looks so different. I don't know if Cricut is coming out with a new update soon, but in beta version, this is different. We no longer have our three little lines on the side. So like I said, just be aware if you switch to beta, things are probably going to look a lot different. So we can toggle back and forth between home and canvas here on the tabs. One thing I did notice after kind of playing around with it, to get back to our settings, it is now moved over here. So under your name will be a drop down arrow. If you'll drop that down, you can then get to settings that way. So now we can go back to settings. And if we want to, we can go back to the live version, which we are going to do just because I really like working in the live. If there are new things that I wanna test out, I will go to beta version. Now, if you do like to work in beta version and you do find an issue, know that to report an issue, you will come to your settings and you will click this button and report an issue. This is how Cricut really fine tunes their, their beta version of Design Space. So if you do like to work in beta, you do see an issue when you are designing or cutting or things like that, always make sure you go and report that so that Cricut can fix that. They can get it ready so that once the live version is ready to go, there are no issues and everything is worked out, okay? So we're just gonna go back to live. Once again, it's going to restart Design Space, not a big deal. Here you can see it's restarting. So just know when you toggle back and forth between beta and live, Cricut Design Space will uh, reopen itself. Now that we've talked about the canvas and our settings and things like that, let's really dive into some true design things that I bet you didn't know you could do in Design Space. So first thing is let's talk about text. I love working with text in Design Space, especially some of the Makers Gonna Learn fonts. I absolutely love them. However, I'm gonna pick on this font Albuquerque for just a second. Once again, this is a Maker's Gonna Learn font. I love it, but y'all, look how thin this font is. It's almost too thin, especially if you're wanting to cut small words. Like, it's almost too thin for a Cricut to even recognize. But, did you know that you can thicken your font? And this can be on any font. It doesn't even have to be a Maker's Gonna Learn font, but you can thicken your font, and let me show you how. So we're going to enlarge our text right here. Once again, this text is currently 
almost nine inches in width and seven and three quarters inches in height, which is tall, and I still feel like it is super thin. So what you're going to want to do, if you want to keep your font style, but you want to thicken it a little bit, what we love to do is come up here to the offset. Now it's going to pop up a pretty large offset. We don't want it that large. So we're just going to backspace and then play around with how big the offset is. Here you can see the offset is around each and every letter. They are not touching each, each other. So I like that. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit apply. That's going to put an offset, but y'all, we can pull this basic text down here and look, we have the same style font, but it is so much thicker and it is going to be so much easier for Design Space to cut. Now, one thing I do want to let you guys know is that if you do it as a text altogether, you can't use certain text functions on this offset, but let me show you a workaround real quick. So if you still want to thicken your fonts, but you want to be able to manipulate each and every, each letter individually, what you need to do first, and this is another little hack that you may not know you could do in Design Space, is go up here to Advance and ungroup these two letters. What that is going to do is it is going to make each individual letter its own layer. Now, what I could do if I wanted to manipulate one of those here you can see we're doing we have that T I can move it around separately so if I wanted to space this out and make even the text a little thicker than what I did earlier you all could see that it was getting really close together that those letters may have touched we didn't want that so what you can do ungroup to letters separate the letters out just a little bit select them all go back up to offset and now I can even make it a little bit thicker if I wanted to so let's draw point two that's still a little thick we've got the x touching in the middle but let's try point one five see what that looks like oh not that 0 0.15 there it's not touching I like it we're gonna hit apply and now the offset is still together but it is spaced out so that you do have a thicker font. Now, if you wanted to just do have individual letters, what you would do is just select each individual letter, come up here to your offset, type in the .15, apply, and then you would just add that offset to each letter. And now you have all of these different offsets that you can manipulate and move around themselves. So now that I've shown you how you can thicken your fonts, while we are talking about fonts, one other thing that I absolutely love is this next feature. So let's say you have ungrouped to letters because you wanted to manipulate and move each letter around individually. However, you are ready to line them back up, space them back out, and you're like, oh, now they're all wonky, they are not going to fit, what am I going to do? They're not going to fit in our blank, whatever, what am I going to do? And you know that you have, let's say from 10 inches to work with. So from six here, we've got from six inches to 16. So we're gonna move this over from six to 16 inches. Right, okay. Still looks like weird, and I know you're thinking, Lauren, what are you doing? Hold up, wait, hear me out. So what you can do, although these letters are literally, we'll even move this one down here. They're everywhere, they're all over the board. What you can do, select them all by either dragging or dropping, or if you have other elements that you don't want to drag and drop, you can select them all over here on the layers panel, what we are then going to do, hear me out, we are going to go to Align. First thing we're gonna do is we are going to distribute them horizontally. So now they are evenly spaced apart across the board. And while they're all still selected, we're gonna go to Align and align them to the bottom. Y'all, 
Now you can see the T's are within those 10 inches and the other letters are evenly spaced apart from each other. I don't know if y'all knew that you could do that, but you definitely can, and it doesn't have to be just with text. For example, let's grab some circles, and let's just, we'll make a couple different sizes. Like if you wanted to create a, a dotted line around a, let's say a, uh, sign and you wanted to have dots around it and you wanted to We'll just duplicate that a couple times. We'll add in the big one over here We'll put oh, we don't want to do that We'll put these in the middle somewhere Let's go ahead and duplicate one more and then we'll duplicate it again and I'll make this one uh, in between the two Okay so we know we want two small ones, a big one and this one, and we want it to be between there and there, okay? Once again, stick with me. This doesn't have to be just with text. So we want all of these to be straight across, right? What we're gonna do first, select them all, arrange, distribute horizontally, okay? Then we're gonna go to align, and we're gonna align them center vertically. And y'all, look, we have a straight line with different size circles, different size shapes that lines up and is distributed perfectly. We don't have to do the math anymore. Cricut does it for us. So this is a feature that is definitely one you must take advantage of because I think once you figure it out and you learn how to work with it, it's gonna be one that you use time and time again. Tip number I don't even know how many at this point. Let's talk about if we have, remember, we these are all ungrouped to letters, right? We see over here on the layers panel that they are all different layers. But we want to bring them back together. So what do we do? We select them all, we come down here, and we can either unite or weld, whichever one you feel like using. Normally, I would use unite, but let's just say for this purpose, we're gonna weld those together. Let's say you've welded them, you've gone back out, you come back in, oh my gosh, I can't remember what font that I just used. It's not telling you over here because it says weld result. And in years past, Cricut has not really been the best at telling us what font we use, especially after welding. So even after a weld, did you know that you can still figure out what font you have used? All you have to do is go over here to your weld result, click the right click on your mouse, come down here to image info, and here you can see it shows us that the font that we used was Albuquerque. So even after you have welded your fonts or your letters together, you can go to, it can, it will show you what font you have used. Now, this is just one font. Let's say you might be thinking, but Lauren, what if I use multiple fonts? Okay, well, let, we're at system fonts. Normally we do a, we'll do a script font with a blocky font. So let's just put this in here. Let's say we've just added this here. We're gonna weld these together. Beautiful, right click, image info. It tells you both of them. Y'all, this is a game changer especially if you love to use weld and you love to weld your text and images together, you can still right click, go down to the bottom where it says image info, and it will tell you what fonts and the names of the images that you used. Now, we've talked about fonts, we've, we've done that for a bit, let's talk about uploads. Did you guys know that once you upload an image into Design Space, it keeps it there for you forever? You don't have to upload it every single time you use it. Let me show you an example. So over here in our uploads, you can see we have uploaded so many different things. What do you wanna bet? This snowman right here, when I hover over it, it says 16 dot winter snowman. I bet you money, we have uploaded this snowman multiple times. And the reason I say that is because fun fact, this specific snowman was part of one of the very 
first cut file releases within Maker's Gonna Learn. So if I had to be, if I was a betting woman, I would say this snowman is in here quite a few times. And honestly, I have no clue, but we're gonna find out together. So how you can do that, go to view all, and then if you search an image, let's just type in, what did we say? We're gonna hover over it and it was winter snowman. Let's just type in snowman. Okay, first of all, this has been uploaded twice. Winter snowman did not come up, but it, we said it was, but look how many times the face has been uploaded. Y'all, that's so many times. Five, what was it, four, six times? That's insane. So let's try that. It, well, I think it was 16 dot winter snowman. <laughs> I told you, here it is once, twice, three, four, four, five, six, oh, seven. Seven times this snowman has been uploaded. So just know, if you have uploaded a, an image into Design Space, you don't have to upload it even if you don't see it. All you need to do is search for it. I know that this didn't pop up when we searched for snowman, but I would just try searching um, for your image name and how you can find your image name is by hovering your mouse over your image and it will pop up. So like this one, 16 dot winter snowman, this one, is a screenshot. This one is outdoorsy. So you can see here that all of these have been, there are multiple files that have been downloaded so many times. And this is really cool because if you hop in on that dollar deal today and you use those 20 downloads, y'all, you can download those into Cricut Design Space. You've got them forever. I mean, we don't have a cut file police that we send to say, hey, that's a Maker's Gonna Learn cut file, we need that back. No guys, it's yours once you download it. Now, I want you to be aware that it does revert back to a personal use license if you are not a member, but another perk of Maker's Gonna Learn is if you are a member, you have commercial use licensing with all of our cut files and fonts, meaning you can use those cut files and fonts and create things to sell to make money for yourself. So now that you've listened to my spiel, let's go back to Design Space and learn more things that I bet you didn't know you could do. So while we're here in our uploads, I wanna add something to the canvas real quick because I want to show you an amazing sticker hack that I bet you didn't know you could do. So we're gonna add this ho 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 to the canvas you can see here that it is a beautiful print and cut image. I love the effects that it has, but let's just say you were wanting to make a sticker and you wanted to make it a little more, I don't know how to say it, but defined. Let's say you wanted to add a black outline to this sticker because I don't know about you guys, but I have noticed that if I'm making a sticker, especially when it comes to text, so we're gonna use this print and cut as an example, but I'm also gonna pull in a text and I'm gonna make a like a thicker font. Let's do Andy, Andy is a cute one. And we're gonna top in, we'll type in Asher. I'm gonna change the color because let's just say our kids want a really cool sticker to put on something he loves. Uh, we'll do blue and then we'll add an offset because we want it to be together. So let's add an offset to this beautiful, we're gonna change the color because, I don't know about you guys, but Asher loves to, things to be colorful. Purple is one of his favorite colors, so we'll just do blue and purple, okay? So, looks really cool. It has like this cool black outline. It defines everything. But what happens when I go to flatten this is that black outline disappears. And it kind of like, especially if you have colors that are very close to each other, it seems like it just gets lost. Let me show you a trick of how you can get around that. So we're gonna unflatten this back. I'm going to just select Asher. I'm going to duplicate it. 
I'm going to come up here to my operations. I'm going to change it to a pin function. Now you can see we have a black pin function. However, if you go to this little square right here, you change it from fine point, you can do extra fine point gel, marker, different size markers. Let's do the 2.5 marker, it's pretty thick. Now you are gonna be limited to your colors when you do this. It is going to limit you to what Cricut has. Not all of them are gonna be super limited, but for this, all intents and purposes, nine times out of 10, we're gonna use black for this. So here we're gonna do black, we're gonna pull this down, we're gonna select all of those layers. We're gonna align them center. And now we're gonna flatten them all together and I want you guys to see what happens. It looks exactly the same. It flattened with that pin layer, giving us a black outline around our sticker. Now if you think, oh Lauren, that's a little too thick, you can unflatten. That is our blue layer. This is our pin layer. We're gonna change it back to pin, okay? change it, you, I said the marker, you, we said thought the 2.5 was too thick. Let's go back to gel black, it's a little thinner. Select them all, flatten them together, boom, you have a thinner black outline. Y'all, that is a game changer, especially when it comes to making stickers. And you can do this on more than just text. So let's say we wanted to make this a sticker, we're gonna size this down. I'm gonna add an offset to it. Let's add a point for offset. Beautiful, apply. I'm gonna change the color to like a, let's go to like a, a tan color. I think that'd be really cute. Love that. However, it still is like our ho, ho, ho kind of gets lost. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna select that. We're gonna duplicate it. Once again, we're gonna change it to a pin function. Now you see we have all of the outlines, beautiful. Um, I don't want it on fine point. I think I want it on glitter, black. I think that, and you could even make it really cool and like offset. Like I love the offset of the outline. There are so many different things you can do with this. So let's just select them all align, center, and flatten. And y'all, look how cute! It gives it a defined edge on your sticker. So, just know that that is something that you can do and that I love this when it comes to print and cut, sticker making, and things like that. Now, while we are here and we have a bunch of things on our layers, let's talk about the layers panel. Did you know that you can Obviously, I love to work from the layers panel, but did you know that you can move things to front and back? So let's put all these together. We see that the text is in the back, the ho 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 stickers in the front, Asher's in the middle, but I want to bring that text to the front. There are a couple of ways you can do that. You can either go to arrange and bring to front, or did you know that from the layers panel, you can just move it to the top and it brings it to the front. Y'all, how awesome is that? You don't have to remember, oh, is it a line, a range? I can't remember. You can just pull this bad boy, bring it up there, and bring it to the front. I am obsessed with that. So you can arrange, bring them to the back, put them in the middle, anything from the layers panel, you just move back and forth. But did you also know that you can, if you have something grouped together, you can also add to a group that way as well. So let's just say we group our two stickers together. You can see here they're moving around in the group. The text is separate. Did you know that you can pull your text and add it into the group as well? And now if I select the group, they're all three together. Same thing, I can say I wanna take Asher out of the group you can still move them around individually, by the way, the whole group, but you can also ungroup things by selecting them and pulling them out. Now, the last thing about the layers panel is did you know that you can rename your layers? So here you can see we have a weld result. If you want to, you can rename this as, we'll just put text because that's what it says or you can rename this one to Ho Ho Ho. Or this one we can rename to Asher. 
So it kind of helps you stay separate, keeping things separate. You can even, so let's go to unflatten. And you see we have the ho 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 here. Here is the outline and here is the offset. So we can rename this one to outline. All this does is it helps you really keep your layers separate so that you know which ones you are working with. So if you don't want to move them on the canvas, you can work with them here. So just know you can move layers from up and down from your layers panel and also rename layers. Wow, y'all, so much information. I really hope that you have learned something in today's video. Maybe you learned a new hack. Maybe you learned a new function. Drop your comments down below, letting me know something that you may have learned, or even if you have something that you want to teach other people or let other people know, drop those in the comments as well. If there's a hack that I didn't show you all today and something that you can do in design space, drop that down below so that we can maybe add that to our next video. As always, if you have enjoyed this video, hit that thumbs up button, subscribe to our channel and hit that bell notification so that you can get notified every time we bring you hacks, tips, tricks, and new crafts. Once again, don't forget to jump in on that dollar deal as well. 20 downloads for a dollar, seven days, absolutely unlimited access to the Makers Gonna Learn website. First link down below, make sure you click that. Help! I don't know what I'm doing because I have attached all of my PNG files together, but they keep cutting out separate. Don't worry, I'm here to help because we're gonna talk today about the difference in flatten versus attach when it comes to print and cut images. My name is Lauren and I'm a craft producer here at Makers Gonna Learn where we bring you inspiration, education, and motivation to get your die cutting machine out and start using it. I'm going to answer the age old question, do I flatten or do I attach? And I'm going to show you two examples of why we are going to do one or the other. If you are new to our channel, make sure you hit that thumbs up button and like this video, subscribe to our channel and hit that bell notification so that you can get notified every time we get crafty. Let's go ahead and talk about it. Which one do I do, flatten or attach? Let's go to Design Space. Now that we're here in Design Space, let's start building our sticker. So I have already uploaded the design or the file that I want. So I'm gonna use this skull with flower, which is going to be linked down below for you guys to use. If you want to use this, you can do so by getting our free seven day trial at the Makers Gonna Learn website, where you can try our websites, get 20 download credits for free for seven days. Um, now you will choose if you want to go monthly or yearly after those seven days if you do not cancel. My advice, go ahead and go yearly because you're gonna save 50% on that membership, it's amazing. So we're gonna use this skull with the flower file and then the font that we're gonna be using is Estuary, can be found on our website. So I'm just going to type in Estuary here and what I'm going to do now is I'm gonna type never, then hit enter and better. From here, what I want to do is I'm going to go to advanced, ungroup to lines. I'm going to bring never here and better here and I'm actually going to curve it a little bit this way and I'm going to curve this one a little bit this way and you're gonna see why here in just a second I'll bring this down now what I'm going to do is with never selected I'm gonna come up here to curve I'm going to curve it down this way and then once again I'm going to change it over here and bring it down a little bit closer to the skull and maybe even curve it a little bit more and then better I'm going to bring up here and I'm going to start curving the opposite way and then take this and rotate it to the right like that and then bump it up against the skull a little more and I'm going to also change the color of the words never better from gray to black once you have placed it where you want to, we're going to select all and I'm going to add an offset. Now you can choose how large or how small you want your offset to be. 
I think for this one, a 0.25 is good. We're going to click apply. I'm going to change the color to white and I'll go ahead and change our canvas color as well. So you can see this a little bit better. And then with the offset selected, I'm going to contour out everything in the middle. So this is what we are left with. Now, we do want this to be print and cut. So what you can do is go ahead and select all of this, come up here to operations and you can see it says basic cut and we just want to change it to a print and cut. Okay. So this looks good. It's a print and cut. You think it looks great. However, you can see over here, they're still all separate layers. So let's talk about the difference between flatten and attach. I'm going to select this, duplicate the whole sticker, bring it over here, and we are going to flatten one and we are going to attach one. So the first one here, I'm going to go to attach and it looks like it's all together. It looks like it's perfect. The next one, I'm going to come over here and I'm going to select flatten. Once again, they look identical, right? So now that we're here, it looks like they're both the exact same. This one is attached. It's all a print. It says all of it says print and cut. This one is a print and cut. So it should be the same, right? Let's go to make it and find out. Now that we're here, you can see that they're still the same. They're still together. They are still here. So you would think that they should cut out the same. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to send this to the printer and we're going to see which one you should do and why. So I'm going to select continue. I'm going to send it to my printer. For this one, you do not have to add bleed. So we're going to turn bleed off and we are going to use system dialog and hit print. I'm then going to pull this down. We want to feed from rear tray and best quality. And then we are going to select print. Now that we've printed, this looks exactly the same. So once again, this one is attached. This one we have flattened. And this, what you're fixing to see is the most important part and why we choose one over the other. So now that we're here, we are going to choose the printable sticker paper. I'm choosing the one with the green paper lining because I don't want it to cut all the way through. And then we're going to load this into our machine. What our machine is going to do now is it is registering the bounding box around our two stickers to cut them out. While our Cricut is cutting, let's think, which one do you think is going to work the best? Flatten or attach? I guess we're fixing to find out. So the reason it is taking our Cricut so long to cut this is because you can see the one that was on the right was our attach file. And what our machine is doing is cutting out every single piece of this sticker, which is why attach is not the solution if we are wanting to cut out one full sticker. Although it looked the exact same, I feel like this is the issue that a lot of our friends run into is although it says it's a print and cut file, we'll attach everything together and then we wonder why it all cuts out separate. That's because we have to flatten the file into three or four separate layers into one single layer. And I will show you exactly what it does here in just a second once it finishes cutting the flattened side of our design. Once it is finished cutting the flattened version. So overhead, you can see that this one on the right Let's try to peel this up. You can see that every single letter and the skull cut out. And not only that, but everything inside the skull cut out. That is why we never want to use attach when we are trying to create a print and cut image. The one on the left here, we'll take it off of here. And actually what I can do is I'll just take up this, 
you can see here that the one on the left is the one that we want. Now that we have answered this question, let's talk about why we flatten over attach. Back in Design Space, although these both look the same, and I know I had some friends that were probably yelling, no, Lauren, we don't attach. But I wanted to show everyone because I truly feel like the best way to learn is by seeing it in action. So I wanted to show you what each one does. Like I said, this one is the attack is the flattened version, which is the one that ended up being on the left. And this one is the attached version, which was the one that ended up being on the right. So here, although it moves around the same, when we go to make it, it looks the same. The reason being is over here in the layers panel. For our Cricut to know that we just want the outline, what we have to do is we have to compress all of these layers into one layer. And how we do that is not by attaching, but by flattening. So now you can see that it has compressed all of those five different layers into one layer, and that is where our Cricut knows to just cut the outline. Now I know that was a roundabout way of telling you which one you need to use, which is flatten, but like I said, I wanted you guys to see it in action because me, I'm a visual learner, and I think a lot of us here are visual learners as well. We can hear one thing over and over, but until we see it in action, it doesn't really sink in. If you only attach your print and cut images together, this is what you're gonna get. You're going to get everything cut out separate. It's not gonna be what you wanted. The reason that we have to flatten is because we're taking one, two, three, four layers, compressing them all together, and getting one layer here like you see on the left. I hope this has answered your question and really helped you flatten versus attach. If you are doing stickers or print and cut images, you're always going to choose flatten. And that's the reason is because we want to compress all the files into one layer. If you have enjoyed this video, make sure you hit that thumbs up, subscribe to our channel, and hit that bell notification so that you can be notified every time we get crafty. I can't wait to see you guys in the next one. Hey friends, Alicia here with another design space tutorial. I cannot wait to show you all this tutorial. This is something that's requested all the time, and it's how to convert PNG images to SVG images. So PNGs are our portable network graphics. These are images that are typically one layer. They have multiple colors. They can be a little bit more detailed than an SVG, but sometimes we wanna cut those PNG images with vinyl and make them multi-layered decals or whatever you wanna make, but we have to know how to turn those flat images into multi-layered images so we can actually cut them out of the vinyl or whatever you plan to do with them. So today I'm gonna to show you not one, but two different ways that you can achieve this. Go ahead, click the subscribe button so you don't miss any of our crafty Cricut design tips and we can go ahead and get started. Okay, so we are on the Makers Gonna Learn website. As you can see, we've got different categories that you all can go into. Now we have our cut files category, obviously we've got our fonts, but this print and cut file area is where we're gonna be at today. So typically with our print and cut images, they are the PNGs, the portable network graphics. Now these come in as a one layered image, but they're typically very detailed and they're made specifically for printing and cutting. But we are wanting to cut a PNG out of vinyl today. So what I wanna do is show you all exactly how to achieve this. Now, I'm looking for an image that doesn't have a ton of detail, but that we are gonna be able to break apart into different layers. So we're just gonna find an image we like. I love this Enjoy Your Day. We're gonna go ahead and download that, and it's gonna pop into a zip folder. 
Now, something good about the Makers Wanna Learn website is that most of the time, whenever we upload new cut files, you're gonna get the PNG as well as the SVG version of an image, but that's not always the case. So what we're gonna do now is take this image, it's only a PNG, so we do not have the SVG version of this, but I'm gonna show you in just a few easy steps how easy it can be to take one of these PNGs and convert it. So the first way that I wanna show you after you've downloaded your image, let's go back to the internet. We are gonna go to this website. It's literally called png to svgcom Now this website is gonna convert it for us, which is super, super helpful. So you can see, we can just drag and drop a file. What I'm gonna do is pop open my finder. I've got my image selected right here. If you can't find your image, go to your recents or your downloads and it should be there. And I'm just gonna drag and drop this into the website. There are many different websites to do this. This one just works the best for us. And once you upload the image, you can see down here, we have our image uploaded. So it's picked up on five different colors, which is perfect. The next thing that we need to do is generate our image. Now, one thing that's gonna be very important for you all, especially when you're using the website version, is that you are using PNGs with a transparent background. If you have pulled an image out of Google, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you are pulling images that have a clear background, a transparent background, if you will. The reason I know that this has a transparent background is because I have this gray on gray checkerboard back here. And also, Maker's gonna learn PNG images always are uploaded to the website without a background. So you're not gonna run into that issue whenever you're pulling PNGs off of our website. If you try to pull one off of Google, you're gonna need to make sure that you are pulling them off with a transparent background. Let me show you all how to know if you are doing that or not. Okay, so I just Googled rainbow just for an example. You can go to tools, color, and then select transparent. This is going to filter out any images that do not have a transparent background. So you're gonna see all of these whenever you download them will have a transparent background. But typically we're gonna be using Maker's Gonna Learn images, so you're not gonna have to worry about that. Now, we've got our image uploaded, so the next thing we're gonna wanna do is generate our image, and then we are going to download the SVG, and you can see it pops in. Once that downloads, I'm gonna hit Control click, and I'm gonna select Show in Folder, so it's gonna take show in finder. So it's gonna take me right to my image inside of my downloads. Keep it selected, come down here to Cricut, and then make sure you are on the uploads area. So go to the left, hit upload image, and then I'm gonna go to our finder and just click and drag that SVG in, okay? Now we'll need to select upload, and then you can select your image, add to canvas, and there you have it. Now, you can see over here, we have multiple layers and everything is separated into its own specific color. Y'all, that is so easy. So, what this is gonna look like whenever you go to cut this out of vinyl, go to make it, and then you can see each of these colors are gonna be on their own mat. How handy is that, y'all? So you can cut these out of these different color vinyls and then you can layer them on your own. Now, sometimes whenever we use this technique, we will run into a lot of jagged edges. And what I mean by that is, and it, it may not even be noticeable that much for you all, but sometimes there will be like jagged edges along the edges of the image and that's just the nature of using that converter. Uh, but most of the time it does pretty good. Now, there is another way to achieve this look and it takes a little bit longer, but I feel like sometimes it can look a little bit more clean. So let me show you all exactly how to do that. Let's go to upload. I'm gonna upload an image. This time we're gonna actually pull the PNG into design space. So we're not pulling that SVG we converted. We're gonna pull the original image. 
So we're going to pull the enjoy your day PNG into design space. I'm going to hit complex and continue. Now, the less colors you have for this, the quicker you're going to be able to do it. Now, this image has a ton of colors, okay? But what we're doing virtually is erasing any of the colors that we don't want. But this one has five colors, if you remember. So we're going to have to repeat this process five times. And what I mean by that is let's just select a color to start with. Let's say we want to do, we want to cut the blue. What that means for us is we're going to have to get rid of anything that is not blue for the first upload. So I'm going to zoom in pretty close and then we can use the select tool to do most of these. You can just go in here, select anything that is not blue. Okay. And zoom out to make sure you got everything. If you want to preview cut image, you can totally do that. And I can already see here, we still have some of those outlines from our rainbow. This is when I like to go in with my erase tool, kind of size it up and you can make it even bigger. And we can remove this rainbow right here because we don't want any of that. And I'm going to zoom in even to the letters. and make sure that those are cleaned up as well. And they look pretty good to me. Make sure I'm just scrolling around to make sure that there's no other little elements that we may not want. And then we can go off of this, zoom back out, make sure everything looks good. I'm going to hit apply and continue. In this instance, we're going to want to use the cut image. Okay. And then what you're going to do is repeat the process for each one. Now, if you're like, I don't really need all those colors. I really just wanted the rainbow to be different colors. I don't need to do that with the words. You can select the portions that you want to keep together. So what I mean by that is basically removing anything that you don't want. And so you would repeat that same process for every letter. Now this one, like I said, it's going to take a little bit longer but we've already done the blue, so we're just gonna delete this. I'm gonna repeat the process, kind of speed things up so you all can just get the gist for what we're doing, and then I'll show you how to lay it out in Design Space. If you accidentally erase something that you don't want to erase, just come up here and click the Undo button. Okay, so you can see we had five colors in our image and now I have five images here. So I'm just going to select these all and you can see they pop down here and we're going to add them to our canvas. This is going to allow you also to customize the colors for however you want them. You just have to kind of piece them together and if it helps you, you can color them as you place them. So. I'm just going to select random colors just so you all can get a good idea of what is going on here. You can see it actually pulls in the colors that originally it used, but you can kind of swap them around if you want. And I would try to make sure not resize anything until you've got it all situated where it's actually supposed to go. And like I said before, select everything together before you resize. And then I'm just going to show you all what these look like side by side. And obviously we're going to be placing all of this manually whenever after we cut it out. So if you're cutting this out of HTV, you would actually have to apply this in layers with your HTV. So you're really only going to be using this technique for very specific projects, but it comes in handy whenever you got a PNG image that you really want to break into different layers. Now, typically if you found a PNG, you could just use like a printable heat transfer vinyl or something like that to get the entire image. But this is just a good way for you all and a good technique for you all to use 
in your future designs if you did want to bring it apart and use different colors of HTV. So this is the first technique that I taught you all, and this is the second one. Let me know which one you all are gonna try out today in the comments, I would love to know. And let me know your thoughts on turning PNGs into SVGs, if you would rather just keep it a PNG and print it on printable HTV, or if you enjoy this part of the design space, or if you enjoy being able to manipulate your files and make things completely custom. I hope you all found today's tutorial super helpful and I hope that you're going to be able to feel like you can elevate your crafts now and really not be limited by a flattened PNG image when you really want to cut it out and use your own special colors. If you all try this technique out and you're a member, make sure to post it in our member only Facebook group. We always love to see your all's creations. And if you're not a member and you really liked what you saw today, make sure to check out the Makers Gonna Learn website and the description below, we've got a link for you all. We would love for you to be a part of our crafty community. We will see you all in the next video. Make sure to subscribe and hit the little bell so you're notified the next time that we post. And we will see you all there. Bye.